Hello, uh, welcome back from the breaks. Um, so we will uh, now move on to um, something about the library ecosystem, the how the Python libraries um, are set up, and also uh, after that we will move on to uh, dependency management. Uh, so Simo, do you, have you introduced yourself already? Yeah, I introduced myself yesterday. Okay. Have you? Uh, yes, so uh, my name is Sabri. So disclaim, I'm not a Python programmer, but I'm a, I support you, you, uh, users uh, on our high performance computer systems. Uh, my current job is as the manager of the Norwegian AI Cloud. Uh, but I also um, contribute to Code Refinery and Alto and all the partners uh, whenever I can. Um, so this uh, library ecosystem, uh, Simo, uh, is that um, when, uh, when, when you want to achieve a certain task, uh, somebody might have already made uh, some code that you can achieve the thing you want to do. So instead of uh, you try to write it again, uh, you could reuse uh, others' work. Um, in the first um, introduction, so uh, we, uh, there was this inter interview with the student so when we study, uh, it it seems uh, people tell you not to take others' work. You know, you have to do everything yourself. Uh, but when you when you come to real research, uh, practically you do, you can't do uh, code everything you want. For example, if you want some uh, matrix transformation or Fourier transformation, uh, some uh, array sorting kind of thing, it's already there out there. So it's it's you have to use them. So we will talk about um, how to um, reuse work. Uh, so this is not um, like stealing other people's work. This is actually reusing and collaboration. Um, do you use a lot of libraries, Simon? Yes, all the time. So so mm. I would say that like why Python is so popular, like especially in, in scientific context is, is because of this library ecosystem. Like Python is not the perfect language uh, for scientific computation. Like what, what for example, Luca said uh, at the icebreaker session this morning that there are languages that try to like are designed for like scientific computing. Python is not one of them, but Python is a very general language. It has all kinds of things mm -hmm. and, and the library ecosystem makes it possible to have various things. So, so like, like Sabri said, like, in in a, in the job interview or something, you might be asked to do like a quick sort algorithm or something. But I would never trust my own algorithm compared to something that is in a library ecosystem that is been validated by hundreds or thousands of users. So yes, yes I I use a lot of libraries all the yes. time. Yes. I don't want to reinvent the wheel if somebody all already has re like perfected it. Correct. So uh, if if, uh, if, uh, if you were there in the, in the first day when uh, Richard and Jano were uh, introducing some uh, beautiful introduction to the course. So Richard asked from Jano, uh, when did you start using Python? And I know for a fact that you know, Jano is a very you know, heavy user of this Python, but he, ha he has to think a little bit. When did I actually use Python? So that's a very important thing that you mentioned, Simon. That means like Python itself is not the... Uh, um, but the very useful part of it. It is just what people made out of Python. So uh, earlier, if you remember that, um, I don't know uh, when you were young, how you learned programming, you know, they taught us uh, pseudocode, you know, and you had to learn how the programming tactics in order to actually write a big, by the time you end up writing some code, you have learned about a semester of, you know, what programming is. Uh, so this Python made it more democratic. It doesn't matter where you come from. Where you come from biology, mathematics, uh, space science, or whatever it is, you can just start achieving something. So that achievement comes from the library ecosystem, as you said. Yes, and um, also I would uh, add here that, like, like for example, my my first start in in Python when I started working on it, I was in a summer job in in Alta University actually, and. And I had to convert a code that was using Python numeric, which was this really old library to NumPy. So I had to convert this code that used this old uh, library to a new library. And the reason behind is that NumPy, like we have spoken already, it 
under, underneath it, it's CN Fortran, like underneath it. But nobody wants to touch that part. Like nobody wants to see that part because it's it's harder to write and and more laborious to write. It's much easier to work with the NumPy arrays, and and yes. that's why like Python is so popular that it can you can write these like other things on top of other things. So you at the mm -hmm. bottom you can have the C stuff and the Fortran stuff and and that sort of thing. But you don't ever have to necessarily touch it. You can just interact gotcha. with Python things, and yes. and that's fine. And that's that uh, that's it still gives you most of the speed that C and Fortran would give, but much more usability. Correct. So it is not the time you first write the hello world. You know, it's not the Py the Python usage people actually use Python when they use a library and do something. Uh, so that's why people. Think a little bit, you know, when did I actually use mm. Python? So it's not the Python hello world print, it's actually the library ecosystem. Uh, and then it is uh, very nice that uh, we have paced, uh, placed all these uh, all three these terms in the in the same uh, screen uh, because uh, taking them alone, libraries, packages, and dependencies, sometimes it's hard to sort of comprehend what this is about. Um, so uh, Zimo, I like to think of libraries as like a like a screwdriver. You know, uh, you can. Uh, it's um, it's not like well documented or well um, uh, um, sort of um, made for uh, 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 like. There's no big description of how to do it, but people who know to use it, they know how to use it. Uh, but the package is more like a tool set with a set of uh, screwdrivers, and there are some instruction, and there are uh, different uh, you know, gauges, different lengths. So you have this uh, difference. So is is that a good way to look at it? These uh, libraries and uh, packages. So how do you how do you look at? Yeah, that? like 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 libraries. When we talk about libraries, we can often mean multiple things. So for example, like. Library can be like a, usually everything in Python is a module. Also, like I'm not completely certain what module means in the context of Python because it's it's used so in so many places so that it becomes a bit more like like it's used so often that it loses the meaning. Like if you say a certain word enough, you don't know what it means anymore. But usually, like libraries are like the libraries and modules. They can be a bit like all over the place, un unless they have been like packaged together and made maybe into like a complete set of like tools tools and and like usually uh, when we talk about packages we mean that there there's like a bunch of code and you don't want to look what necessarily what's inside of it if it works correctly mm -hmm. but you want to interact with that code with certain like functions or objects or certain things that it presents you so for example like you NumPy arrays have a lot of like hidden things inside of the hidden attributes and that sort of thing. But you don't want to work with those because they are inside the package. Mm. You want to work with the, the functions that the arrays present to you or what the developers of the package present to you. Yeah. So you yeah. want to like only only deal with the outermost layer of the package because that's what the developers of the package want to give you. And that's how it usually goes that you have like an outermost layer of of nice things that you can use, and inside there's like a like a whole mess of stuff. But you don't necessarily yes. need to mm. worry about that because the, that's the packet manager's uh, problem yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or developer's so problem. Yeah, yeah, presented with the e easier interface uh, for what you want to achieve. Uh, and when it becomes dependencies, it's also like libraries and packages. You know, if you are building something, you know, uh, let's say if you, if you want to like build a table, you need like nails and bolts. So these nails and bolts are sort of like dependencies. So, so the table could not be made without those things. Uh, and then these nails, they are specific length, type, and gauge. You know, it, not all nails will fit all joints. So there are when it comes to dependencies, it's it's about. Uh, other things that you need to uh, uh, for your code to work, and also there are some specifications that we will uh, go on uh, later on. Uh, and then we talk about this um, uh, sci-fi scientific Python ecosystem. Uh, this is uh, maybe the ecosystem most of the research community they get. Uh, they would think that they start using Python, you know, when they start using this. Um, so we have this uh, NumPy, Sci-Fi, Matplotlib, uh, Panda for data structures. You know, Panda could, uh, when people uh, work, researchers work with data, it could do wonders. Uh, they get, you know, really amazed how Panda could help them. 
you know, they could scrape uh, web pages for tables, they could uh, create data frames, and then uh, you have the NumPy with all the optimized uh, array functions and um, all the mathematical functions there. So this is kind of the, the ecosystem that um, people start uh, actually interacting, not all people, but you know, researchers mm. uh, that we, we interact with. And, uh, and yes, uh, Simon? Yeah, yeah, and I, I'll just mention quickly that like also this ecosystem is highly influential to other packets. So mm. so like like they are like yesterday there was questions in the chat, for example, about polars or or dusk about like which are like built upon pandas, but do pandas more efficiently or like more in parallel or something like that. But they usually like build upon the syntax and the ideas behind these packages. So like there are lots of packages that do the same thing or again but they try to reuse as much as the like the language that NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib and like they do similar kinds of things, but they might do it a bit differently, like or or better or something like that, but or efficiently or in parallel. But they usually reuse the language. They they reuse the same kinds of concepts. So if you learn these like core concepts around like the NumPy ecosystem, you can then uh, transfer them to other other things. Uh, or in other ecosystems uh, or yeah. in other tools that use this. Yes. So uh, in addition, you know, there are other packages like, you know, scikit-learn, you know, we could have this in, this is not like an exhaustive list here. So this is, uh, you know, a part of it. So if you're doing some classification, machine learning, you know, even scikit-learn is uh, using uh, these uh, packages. And if you extend things like PyTorch has a like optimized uh, version of NumPy uh, manipulations for, machine learning uh, related um, operations. Uh, and the rest uh, is really, um, Simo, this is uh, for uh, people to read, um, you know, about other packages. So I would not spend time on reading through this because I think the next lesson of dependency, we can uh, uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, only thing uh, before I give it to you, uh, I want to mention is the, um, this uh, Py connected to Python uh, to other languages because we will we'll talk about Conda, for example, next. Um, so connected to other languages, uh, the, the library that we were talking about, NumPy is a good example. So there are certain things uh, Python, um, they could do it, but there, there are other programming like, like uh, languages like C could do it better. Uh, for initially, um, when, the, when the code uh, you write, uh, it, it could write on your laptop. Uh, you know, run on laptop. But if you go to go to go to like high performance computer system or like a bigger server or to achieve bigger things, uh, you have to uh, use the resources optimally and also to understand the underlying hardware. For example, how how uh, wide is your processors registry registry with? For example, you know that kind of things we don't don't worry about when you do Python programming. So Python provides uh, these libraries behind the scenes. They use C or Fortran or other languages. Uh, for example, Richard slightly mentioned that you have this uh, one uh, data, uh, one uh, one program that you want to introduce different data sets. Uh, so we call this uh, the SIMD, you know, single instruction multiple data uh, kind of um, uh, work. So those are better done in uh, other languages than Python. But you don't have to learn all those things. You only need to learn how to call those. So if you want to uh, um, do some uh, vectorization, for example, if you have a loop that goes through 10 things, you could do Python loop. But if the loop is going through 100,000 things, you don't want to go through the 100,000 steps one by one. You want to go 100 steps at a time or 1,000 steps at a time. So those kind of things we call you know, loop vectorization could be handled by this code, but you could still use them inside your Python uh, environment. Um, is there anything else uh, that we want to mention here before I give it to you? Yeah, I'll, I'll so, quickly mention this last chapter about evaluating Python packages. Hmm. So, so how do you like know what is good? Like, this if you go hmm. to GitHub, there's like million packages, and there is no like single way of determining what is good or something is bad. What I usually do is like I try when I when let's say our user wants to solve a certain problem and they fuck wonder if they should really implement an algorithm or if, if they already ex exist an algorithm that does it. I try to find with the corresponding keywords the 
like a Git repository or something in GitHub that that would provide so, such a package. And then I look for various factors, like is there a community around this package? Is, has it been validated scientifically? Is there like papers published from the package? Are there like lots of stars? When was the last commit? And these sort of things, like you need to usually check, like what is the community around it? Uh, and what is the, is it, is it trustworthy source? Like, is it some random guy somewhere? Can I, can I actually myself validate it? Of course I cannot validate, like, let's say NumPy. I don't have time to read the whole source code, but if it's like a one, one page long, maybe I can see what it does. And, and these sort of things, there's various factors. Uh, and here are some questions that you can ask yourself when you're trying to validate. And I would say that it's always a good idea to first look if somebody else has done it. And maybe check if you can extend upon it. Like, for example, many, many uh, frameworks, like, for example, Scikit-Learn, they provide a very comprehensive way of extending their own things so that you can, like, if you write the way they write their, like, uh, models and that sort of thing, you can reuse all of the other tools that they provide. Uh, and then you don't have to, like, <laughs> like figure how to do like a, a cross validation or something like that yourself mm -hmm. because you can use the algorithm that they use for cross validation for your model or something like that so so it's usually a good idea to check what the packages provide how to extend usually there's like a development document somewhere where they say that okay how to extend this package and then they provide like guide <laughs> on how to how to like write my own stuff on to on top of a uh, already existing library and it's usually not that hard it's usually much harder to start something from scratch and of course sometimes it's needed but a lot of times you can build upon what other people have done yes so the i will only comment about this the security part because you mentioned the other uh, the list there could be malicious packages as well so that is trust uh the research is based on trust actually so the um, so when you when the when you use a library, you could especially if, if the library concerns like web security, for example, you can't just use a uh, just because it's doing the what thing what you do. You need to have a proper understanding of what it actually do, uh, and also there could be malicious libraries, misspelled malicious libraries. You have NumPy and you like NumDie or something, you know, uh, just to elude you. So you have to be a little cautious as well. Uh, then I think we should go to the next lesson about you know how we manage uh, dependencies. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's jump to that. So I'll I'll take the screen share. If Richard can then switch it to mine. 